Once again, I welcome back to this session. In this part of the session, we will get to study about the cement concrete blocks. In the last part of the classes, you have studied the stone as a building material, bricks and timber. And the later on stages, in addition to this, whenever the huge part of the buildings are to be erected and it has to be established, in that cases and all, the usage of the bricks as well as the stones have proved to be laborious task. Therefore, some of the material engineers or the scientists, they have planned to make the size to be much more larger with a combination of the stone ingredients. That part of the stone ingredients along with the binding material is made into a particular mould casting a geometrical shape and sizes which are slightly porous in nature but not completely. That kind of the mixture of the blocks we call it as cement concrete blocks. In regarding to today's part of the subject, let us get to know introduction especially how the cement concrete blocks are taken and how they have been manufactured, what are the different types of the sizes uh, that are available in the market. Okay. Here in the coming on to the introduction part, especially these kind of the blocks have very important work in the case of the apartments or maybe a 12 storage or maybe even in the case of 4 or more than that. Why? What is the reason? Because the dimensions are quite larger in nature. Meanwhile, whatever the ingredients which we are going to use, especially the cement fine aggregate as well as the coarse aggregate in a proper ratio that are to be mixed and finally, they are to be molded, dried and they have to be seasoned also properly. The drying process is a major task upon in the immersion in the water where it has to be left it for the curing purpose. This is an another important terminology curing. The process of immersion of the material is especially done for the binding agent in order to see that whatever the hydration of the cement has to take place. Now another question arises, what is meant by cement? What is meant by hydration of cement? All this sort of the things you are going to study in depth regarding in your next part of the semester, especially in concrete technology. Till then, you only understand the basic concepts regarding to the cement concrete blocks. Now, in order to classify, the blocks are broadly classified into three types, a hollow concrete blocks wherein one portion of the block is completely a solid in nature, another portion is hollow in nature. This kind of the block we call it as a hollow blocks. Again, in the hollow blocks we have three types of the grades. What are those? Grade A, grade B, grade C. Now, grade A type of the hollow blocks, for what purpose they are used? They are mainly used for load bearing walls, load bearing walls. especially for that particular purpose. What about in the case of the density? The density it is being varying sometimes it will be in the range of 1500 kg per meter cube. What about in the case of the compressor strength means when the concrete blocks have been casted out 
when it is subjected for all the particular curing purpose the next step it is to test whether how much amount of the load it can be able to withstand the amount of the load which can be able to withstand it tends to vary normally it has to be varying from 3.5 or what we call it as greater than 3.5 newton per millimeter square so 3.5 it can also be even 4 4.5 5.0 and then 7 newton per mm square that is a one particular part grade b these are the another set of the category but they are not particularly utilize it for the broader range where the compressor strength will be slightly lesser than that of the gradient hence we call it as this is also used for the same load bearing walls but there are certain changes even though the density remains the same whereas the range it will be starting from maybe 1.5 to 3.5 4.5 and 5 or in certain cases 2 3 4.5 so on in terms of a newton per millimeter square grade c these are the other sort of the hollow blocks normally they are having the density about 1000 kg per meter cube this grade c it is mainly used for a non load bearing walls non load bearing walls non load bearing walls when they are particularly used for the non load bearing walls obviously the applied strength is less than 3.5 normally starting from 1.5 newton per mm square whatever the outside portion of the compounds which are being constructed that part of the material especially for the non load bearing walls having a density of 1000 kg per meter cube is particularly utilized hence these are the classification especially in the case of hollow blocks next part we also have another criteria what is that in the case of the compressor strength how it is being determined whatever the concrete blocks if it has been casted out it has to be cured only after the 28 days the compressive strength test like how we have done for the case of the bricks similarly compressive strength test is being performed compressive strength test is being performed and later on these are the specifications given for the designated usages clear with it now moving on to the next part of the block solid blocks as the term suggests that they are completely solid in nature whose density is greater than 1800 kilogram per meter cube and even the compressive strength is greater than 4.5 newton per mm square 4.5 newton per mm square now what is the speciality of the solid blocks where it can be used obviously it is also used for either a load bearing or even in the case of the non load bearing purpose also 
that is uh, another thing where the strength varies from 4.0 to 5.0 Newton per millimeter square. 4.0 to 5.0 Newton per millimeter square. This is related to the usages. Obviously, whatever the load bearing as well as non load bearing, they can be utilized for this. And next part that we come across is the paver or what we call it as a paved type of the blocks. It is also known as a paver type of the blocks. What is meant by paver type of the blocks? They are mainly a solid blocks itself only and maybe in the case of certain things hollow can also be done in the middle combination. They are available in various geometrical shape as well as the sizes. shape and sizes. They may be a rectangular in nature, a trapezoid or maybe a rhombus or even in the hexagon or a pentagon, whatever the polygon type is available, mainly they are available in that part of the sizes. What are its uses, where it has been used or where it has been applicable in practical conditions. Normally, for the footpaths, footpaths, parking lot, and industrial floor, industrial floor, these are certain cases and even in the case of the petrol bunks also normally we can go for seeing it okay wherever the heavier work has been taken up in the factories also or even in the some of the educational campus in the schools or maybe in the sorts of the colleges you come across for the usage of the paver type of the blocks not only there it can also be used even for the aesthetic and appearances also and a walkaway region even in the park also okay etc so on these are the types of the block normally you might have seen like this sort of the block like this or maybe a hexagonal shape which you can see So these are the certain examples for the paved type of the blocks. Like this it may be available, I am just showing the rough portion of the diagram. In the next part let us get to know how the cement concrete blocks are manufactured. The manufacturing process mainly requires a raw materials what we call it as an ingredients. Let us get to know manufacturing process of cement concrete blocks. In this manufacturing process of the cement concrete blocks raw material or the ingredients mainly taken in the form of the ratio 1 is to 6 where one part of cement is required cement 6 parts of combined aggregate combined aggregate what does that combined aggregate represents it is a combination which you are going to study in the next part both the fine 
aggregate we call it as as well as the coarse aggregate. The grain size which are finer in nature size will be less they are been passing through the 4.75 mm sieve till 150 micron we call it as a fine aggregate passing greater than that of the 4.75 mm sieve the retainment will be taking place or maybe in the case of like in 20 mm 40 or maybe 60 mm 80 mm in that particular cases we call it as a coarse aggregate. Now cement and combined aggregate they have a fineness modulus we call it as a fineness modulus the fineness modulus should be ranging with respect to 3 to 4 the combined form. So raw materials has been ready 1 is to 6 ratio has been taken and then what they have to be mixed completely mixing process we call it as after the mixing sometimes they are being subjected for the dry mixing in other words they are also subjected for the wet mixing process only some portion of the water is being added up if whatever it is required added at optimal quantity. When the water is added to the optimal quantity what happens the cement along with the aggregate they may be a rounded or may be angular in nature or irregular in nature that part of an aggregate tends to bind each other by the usage of the binding material especially the cement. Therefore what happens in this part they have to be taken into a molding portion and the block has to be casted out ok. The next part we call it as a casting where the molded portion is done immediately they are being casted. So casting involves using the platform for it and a hollow portion material where you need to fill it and later on you need to tamp it or in nowadays a machine is being available to make compact in nature the compacted part of the brick is being utilized what we call it as a concrete block they are obtained. Next stage is the curing what kind of the curing we come across either the casting what I have told they can neither be made through the hand or maybe even the machine also. Certainly when they are being compacted they have to be subjected for the curing process. So we call it as a curing. Curing is done either manually or if you want it in the case of the curing to be taking place much more faster rate because of the reaction we have two types one it is a water curing I will continue it here we call it as a water curing and another is steam curing. In the case of the water curing the blocks are completely immersed in a tank and it is being subjected for a 14 day period retention time whereas the water has to be completely changed for every 4 days. 4 days water has to be changed. In order to see that if there is any sorts of the development of crack or shrinkages or warpages that has to be checked out to assure the proper quality. The next thing it is steam curing where the steam has been passed through the concrete block along with the air circulation this kind it improves the rate of the curing but slightly costlier and it also checks regarding the shrinkages 
obviously when it has been subjected the size of the material start to shrink that we call it as a shrinkage material of the property of any given material. Therefore, freshly made and uncured part of the blocks are not to be used for the construction purpose. This is a another sort of an category. Now, in the next upcoming part, we also have another blocks we call it as aerated autoclaved AUTO autoclaved aerated concrete blocks. But that part I will be going to take in the later on aspects. First, you go through the overall picture of the cement concrete blocks. Before going to that, you need to see what are the dimensions of the cement concrete blocks. The dimensions of the cement concrete blocks, they vary across the length, width as well as even the height also. Obviously, dimensions will be larger than that of the bricks. What are those? I'll let you know. The dimensions of cement concrete blocks. Mainly, I forgot to tell you, in the case of the combined aggregate, the ratio which is being taken further subdivided into 60 percent of the fine aggregate, 40 percent of the coarse aggregate. That is the ratio taken for the mixing of the aggregates to get the proper yield. Okay, that is one thing I forgot to tell you. Now, coming on to the dimensions of the cement concrete blocks. Regarding the dimensions of the cement concrete blocks, we come across the length, breadth, as well as the height also. What about the length and all? Length obviously, it starts from 400, 500, 450. 400, 450 or maybe even 500, 550 or maybe in the case of even the 600 mm. Now what about in the case of the breadth that is nothing but the width component. The width it may be vary either it may be a 150 mm or maybe even 200 or maybe even ranging from 200 to 100 or what we call it as 100 mm that is the breadth sorry we have the various ranges starting from 50 75 100 and after that we also have 150, 200, 250 and so on like that. We have the sizes in terms of an mm. The height means it mainly varies to that of the brick itself only either 200 mm or 100 mm either 200 mm or 100 mm mm. These are the particular dimensions that we come across in the manufacturing of the bricks and these bricks can be manufactured in an 8 hour shift period eight hour shift period where you can get around 1600 blocks, 1600 
blocks can be obtained. 1600 blocks can be obtained in an 8 hour shift period. That is the capacity. If it is made machine molded, more than that, 10 or 12,000. Nowadays, you can be able to get it. But one thing is, it has to be properly cured, dried, then only utilize it for construction purpose. And these processes can be continued throughout the year. Not like any sorts of the brick and all where they need to wait for the soil components during the rainy season what happens the brick components the bonding will be much more lesser in that particular sorts of an aspect care has to be taken therefore they have been stagnant or stopped in that particular aspect but here in the case of the concrete blocks it has been continuously manufactured throughout the year this is pertaining to the manufacturing process and the utilization. Now, let us come across the advantages as well as the disadvantages of cement concrete block. Coming on to the advantages. Hollow blocks, paver blocks or paved blocks or even the solid blocks. Since they are larger in nature, construction work becomes much more easier. Larger the size, the construction purpose becomes much more quicker. And it can be easily transported. Slightly, it will be heavier than the bricks, especially if you take in the case of the solid concrete blocks. Hollow, slightly the less part of the weight. Another thing it is, it is also useful in large scale construction purpose. Large scale construction purpose. Even in the case of the buildings or malls or even the hotels or even the apartments. It may be commercial, whatever the things. Please do go through the first introductory part of the session. How many type of the buildings are being classified? Similarly, like that. Another thing, what about the investment cost? Here, mainly the investment cost is quite less when compared to the brickwork and all only small area is required not large area they can be compactly utilized in that part of the area therefore investment cost is less in capital and regarding the land area also. Even in the case of a 10 meter by 20 meter, they can construct it, even in the less also. Like that, there are different sorts of an advantages you can come across. What is the disadvantages? The disadvantages are three main factors. One, it is related to the compressive strength because since it is utilized for the load bearing purpose even in the construction. Since the compressive strength will be lesser than that of the bricks when you compare it, it can be easily distorted provided that if the quality of the work is proper then no source of distortion. If the quality of the work is bad in nature, obviously the load bearing capacity tends to decrease. That is uh, one of the major thing and it also exhibit shrinkages due to the 
moisture content which is present in excess in nature. Next thing it is blocks cured for the 14 days and it is also dried for a period of even the 4 weeks also. So how much 4 weeks means it is 28 days. In that regard the construction purpose which is utilized it will be more than that of the brickwork that is the major thing. Another disadvantage is as I have told that if you take in the case of an uh, ordinary uh, reinforced type of the block work it will be very much weaker in nature. So these are the three things. reinforced the shrinkage and the compressive strength. If it is completely porous in nature therefore reactions are quite more. Therefore in that regard even though the concrete blocks they possess excellent fire resistance again they have certain sort of an disadvantages. So these are the things any material if you are going to take it based upon the utilization they have pros and cons also. Whatever the pros whose majority of the material it possess that we will go for utilizing that is what we call it as a good requirement good requirement of the blocks means there are certain criteria let us get to know one by one. Similarly whatever that we have tested in the case of the bricks and all the concrete blocks shall also possess some of the properties. So should possess the good compressive strength, compressive strength and more durability. Second thing it should be cheap and economical in nature. Transportation must be easier. should be able to resist the fire. Another thing that we come across in the case of the blocks I, I either it may be a cement concrete blocks or maybe aerated type of the concrete blocks it should have an excellent property of resisting the fire conditions. Another important aspect that we come across here is related to what are the other properties that you normally see. So it should not object the durability condition. Next thing it is the joints which are being formed. by the application of mortar must be strong. Must be strong and in turn should be much more quicker in nature to be reactive and it should not degrade or the crack portion shall not tend to develop should not render cracks, should not render the cracks. This is the re major part of the requirements of the good part of the concrete blocks especially the cement concrete blocks. We also have certain things toughness or even the 
age wise how the concrete has been utilized like this we have so many things. But for your part of the class this much part is enough. Next moving on to the next another interesting aspect as I have stated that the cement concrete blocks is a mixture of cement fine aggregate as well as even the coarse aggregate. In that regard let us get to know the in depth concept of fine aggregate. What is meant by fine aggregate? Where it is been available? Is there any other uh, natural ways or maybe artificial ways that has to be prepared out? And if it has to be prepared how uh, the concepts are related to that? Let us get to know. Here the term fine aggregate it refers to the grain size passing through the IS sieve that is Indian standard sieve passing through the standard sieve especially less than 4.5 36 mm up to 150 micron that particular portion where it has been passing through it is designated as a fine aggregate fine aggregate they may be angular or it may be rounded in nature or even irregular also. If you wanted to know the fine aggregate there are various sorts of classification as I have told either through the natural means or even through the artificial process also. Nowadays natural means means there are certain types which are available or applicable. What are those in that conditions? We call it as a natural aggregate. And artificial aggregate. The term here if you refer aggregate means fragments of material which are conglomerated together or attached together not completely attached. So, they are binded or bounded together fineness means the size of the particles are little bit lesser in nature ok not completely A broader sense they are lesser in nature having less part of the thickness also. Here in the case of the natural aggregate they are mainly obtained by the weathering phenomena or the disintegration of the rock fragments. Disintegration of rock fragments. disintegration of the rock fragments. Now another question how are you going to classify it? If you see in the case of the river nowadays you might have observed in the media and all scams regarding to the usage of the aggregate near to the rivers and all that kind we call it as a river sand. If the sand are available apart from the river in the natural means when 
it is driven in the ground we call it as a pit type of this sand sand which are much more finer near to that which are present near to the seashore region we call it as a sea sand now let us study one by one pit sand pit sand whenever the pit is been driven into ground you will be able to obtain it provided that the vegetative matter has to be taken out then only when you go for dugging it out then the sand portions are being utilized that fragments we call it as a pit type of the sand they are mainly free from salts when they are free from salts obviously a corrosion will be less and they use it for major parts of the construction purpose construction purpose not only that for all purpose what about in the river sand weathering phenomena or maybe the disintegration takes place along through the carrying of the river water that has been deposited due to the meandering process that fragments or the particles which are available we call it as a river sand obviously only certain amount of the salts or the traces are being present this part of the sand we call it as a sedimentary deposit due to the movement this part of the sand can be utilized for all sorts of construction purpose now if you going to take the shape of this pit which has been driven into ground they are quite angular in nature whereas if you take in the case of the river sand they are quite rounded in nature they are quite rounded in nature like this you have this is the differences that you are going to see next category of the sand we know it it is a sea sand sea sand contains the seashore salt deposit traces can be found out easily in this sand it cannot be utilized for any source of the construction if it has to be used finer in nature workability will be more and it renders much more corrosion if it is utilized for any source of construction purpose moreover it also damages the biota or the biodiversity of the nearby system like how the mafia in the case of the river sand they are dealing with nowadays the river sand is not available another question arises here it is if the river sand is been depleting means when the natural resources are been exploited to the major extent how do we need to create another sort of resources there are different sorts either even in the case of the mining industries whatever the ways which have been obtained in the slag or formations or in the form of the cinders and all that has to be utilized for the construction purpose that we call it as a manufactured part of an aggregate which we call it as artificial aggregates we call it as artificial aggregates what is meant by artificial aggregates they are manually or maybe artificially obtained through the crushing of the stones crushing of the stones
into a preferable size. Crushing of the stones into a preferable size. This particular usage is, is what we are going to denote it as the artificial part of an aggregate. What is that? Stay tuned for it. Let us get to continue in the next episode. Till then, thank you.